we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed and today just deal with the rationale for the theme 2025 i'll continue with the teaching on um the worship um next week god willing but today I want to deal with the fundamental reason seven to account for the theme 2025 for the Church of Pentecost. Last week, by the grace of God, the heads of the Church of Pentecost Global met uh, for a prayer and retreat prayer meeting now what you are trying to if you are heads sir a war a sorry moon now you know it's here now a year by book and your country and so we unveil and discuss the theme for the coming year now a new mono i feel you're basically mono but i are when you're media my own you're part one to my and you do home come today we send them to some assemblies in accra to explain the rationale for the theme 2025. And And this evening, I want to take the few minutes that we have to try to throw light on the fundamental reasons serving to account for the theme 2025. Can you lift your song? What song will touch of you? Did he say, Mama, it is that you mean? Touch of you can change my life. It was I know some of you are not members of our church. But I invite you to join us as we share together what is the word of God and all of us can adopt uh, no matter the church you attend so that together we will transform our world. Now God has said before us a vision. Now, a vision brings all of us on the, the same page. Now, a vision makes a person. Now, a vision makes strong institutions. A vision brings that institution warmth and direction. In fact, a life without a vision is like a ship without a rudder. Now, so we want to stay to the vision that God has given us. The vision of possessing the nations. That is influencing every sphere of society with values, principles, and lifestyle of the kingdom of God. And as a result, bringing many to Christ. This vision of possessing the nations is inspired by Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 7, Deuteronomy 9 verse 1 verse 1 verse 1 verse 1 of these chapters so in this one you know you know so you know it's so you know it's in 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 so now we have divided this vision into two parts Halves. Now the first half was 
We named it Vision 2023. That was equipping the church to transform every sphere of society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. And so the first half was to equip members so we can transform our world. Now the second phase of the possessing the nation's agenda has this overarching theme. Now, unleashing the whole church to transform their world with values and principles of the kingdom of God. Unleashing the whole church. The clergy, the lady, the children, the whole church. Now, to transform their world with values and principles of the kingdom of God. Now, this phase is to strategically unleash the vast potential currently locked up in the fortress of the church to descend on the world and transform it. Now the first theme that we drew out of this overarching theme for 2024 which we are working with in this year or was a people of God and leads to transform their world. A people of God unleashed to transform their world. What we sought to achieve by this maiden theme was for members to go out into their spheres of influence with the consciousness that they are a people of God. Now we are already in the world. So when we say that we are unleashing ourselves into the world, we are trying to uh, let you be conscious of the fact that there is business for you to do in the world. So we should have the consciousness that we are a people of God. In the midst of the people, we are a people of God. We are a people amongst the people. Now men among the men. We are women among the women. We are God's special possession. God's special possession. A people with a divine mandate and authority to bring their world onto, under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, to bring change to their world. Now, having been unleashed as a people of God into the world, it is important for us to live such lives that is worthy of our calling. Hmm. To bring about the needed transformation in people and society. Now, consequently, the executive council of the church has decided that the theme for the year 2025 shall be unleashed to live a life worthy of your calling. Now, this year, we are 
y un frère. To live a life worthy of your calling. Puye, nam yeso, na bobra e fata wo frère. The calling of the church is to declare in word and demonstrate in attitude and deed the character of Christ who lives within his people. Now we are to declare the life, a life-changing encounter with a living Christ and demonstrate sin. But a changed life. Now until we have done that, nothing else we can do will be effective for God. Now when the church is faithful to its calling, it becomes a healing agency in society. It is a healing agency in society. Able to lift a whole nation or an empire to a higher plateau of healthy, wholesome living, bringing glory to God and turning many to cry. Now it to me peja on mine and my see in yampo and ma with to me and you yam brave radia what done be a with to me the I are a son or dumps from a brain depending. So next year we are looking at a people that have been unleashed to live a life worthy of their calling. And I fear ye be saying mono with tired up no son, eh say ye pie a one nam ye so a bobra a fata yem fre. Now the theme twenty twenty five. Is premised on three scriptural verses. Afi a yebesi imuno asemwa eda ponoso no ni nina swa e wachiro ni mo beya miensa. Now the first one is Ephesians four verse one. Nedi kano ye Ephesians four homa eti na imu edi kano. Now if you're a member of the church, please pay attention to the verses. Oh yeah, asafuiba bomodi ana she nyami asemwa yebekin kenyi. Ephesians four verse one. Ephesians four homa eti na imu ba ako. First Thessalonians four verse seven. Thessalonica four homa edi kanyi eti na imu sano. And then Galatians one twenty four. Now if you Galati four homa eti ba ako imu edi ono nine. Ephesians four one. Galatians 1 24. I would like to expound them briefly relative to the theme on hand. So I will take Ephesians 4, verse 1. We'll read Ephesians 4 1. Mama Yankai. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life. Paul is urging the congregation in Ephesus. To live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Now, if he says you have received, he's, he, he's suggesting that his congregants, they know the calling they have received. Now, so we have received a certain kind of calling. And we need to live a life worthy of that calling that we have received. See, a, a congregation just does not just chance to come together. For the ecclesia, is specifically sermon together by God. The fact that it is God's group rather than ours has far-reaching implications. See, the main one is that we are not our own. We are sermon for a purpose to bring glory to his name. So when you are a member of the church, remember that you are sermoned by God. 
no. To bring glory to his name. See in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 21. Paul was ending a prayer that began from verse 14. This is how he ended the prayer. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And because it's a prayer, you see the amen? Amen. 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 So his prayer is that, that God's glory will continue to be in his church from generation to generation. Last week, we realized that when the temple worship was inaugurated, the glory of the Lord filled the temple and Moses couldn't enter. That was when the tabernacle was the tabernacle worship was formally inaugurated. Now, when the temple replaces the tabernacle, the Bible says that the glory of God once again entered the temple and the priest could not enter. Now, what is he teaching us? The most important thing that should fill the temple of God is his glory, not human beings. Not priests. Not congregation. But the glory of God. It is the glory of God that is a spiritual kind of paint that we use to paint God's church. So wherever you talk about the temple, that we are talking about the glory of God filling in. So Paul is praying that the glory of God will continually be in his house from generation to generation. But you see, he is writing a letter. When we say epistle, it is a letter, but a long letter. So he is writing, he was writing to the church in Ephesus. And at the point, he was still writing, but he was praying a prayer for them. So, verse 21, he is still writing, but artificially, we have introduced chapters and verses. So now you go to chapter 4, and it's as if you have begun a new kind of page. But meanwhile, the man was writing. Now remember that when he, he wrote to the Ephesians, it was not without chapters. And it was without chapters and verses. So he was writing that but we have introduced a chapter. So suggesting that this man is a different kind of face, but I'm saying that he was still right. So he's praying a prayer that the glory of God will remain in the church in every generation. Then he continues saying that as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you, 
Christians, our angel, our brothers in Ephesus, to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. What is he trying to say? God is to be glorified in the church. But how? By Christians living a life Worthy of the calling they have received. A worthy work is one that is consistent with a Christian's dignified position as a member of the body of Christ. You see, our exalted standing in Christ calls for corresponding godly conduct. Faith in Christ places a demand of righteousness on us. Are we together? So the Apostle Paul in this chapter tries to paint the picture of a kind of life one ought to live live when they enter the Christian community. You see, it is important to realize that the life of the Christian community is not merely a negative abstention from vice. But a positive display of Christian virtues of humility, gentleness, patience, love, and the pursuit of peace. How many of you don't drink liquor? Okay, okay. How many of you don't fight? Oh, yes, yeah. hey, some of you, you are still fighting. <laughs> but you see, the Bible says that blessed is the man who does not, who does not, but he didn't end with does not, but he but said, but who's, who delights? So Christianity is not just negative holiness of I don't do this, I don't need that, but what do you do? Yeah. See the apostle Paul is that put off the old man and put on the new man created in Christ. So when you are the type who is always putting off, putting off, you'll be stuck naked. And you have to clothe with righteousness, yourself with righteousness. The second verse. First Thessalonians 4 verse 7. First Thessalonians 4 verse 7. Shall we read together? Ready, go. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Now, let's take 2 Timothy 1 verse 19. 2 Timothy 1 verse Timothy, Homa, a tossum, you know, it's a barco in your own crown. We just take the first part. He has saved us. And called us to a holy life. So he has saved us and called us to a holy life. So let's go back to First Thessalonians 4 7. The Thessalonica For God did not call us to be impure. But to live a holy life. Now, so when the Thessalonians accepted Paul's gospel, 
They were responding to God's call. That call did not have in it its goal impurities. But rather a life of holiness. So when we say we are walking worthy of the calling we have received, the call we have received is a holy call to live a holy life. It is important to know that the purpose of the coming of Christ was to rescue us from our enemies and enable us to serve God in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. I like the key version. This particular verse. Now let's go to Luke chapter 1. 74 first and then 75. Now, this is Zachariah's prophecy concerning Jesus Christ. Now, where Zachariah before he was born? He says that he will cause us to rescue us from the hands of our enemies. And to enable us to serve him, God, without fear. Verse 75. We serve God without fear in what? Holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Now before him all our days. Now one day God called Abraham and said, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. Abraham, Oh, Abraham, bro, bro, I said, my friend, say, come walk before me say, and be perfect. Sit down for bra. So when Paul says that the Ephesians should walk worthy of the calling they have received, he essentially meant that they live a life of holiness. That is the calling we have received. To live a life of, of holiness in the midst of the per, a perverse world. The church is destined to be holy. Now lift your heads and look at me. Don't be afraid of the word Holy. Sometimes it appears like a caricature. People fear holiness. You see, holiness is to live the normal Christian life. And we can. Because that is the reason why Jesus came to die. To help us live before God in holiness and righteousness all our days. Holy life is living the normal kind of Christian life. And say, because we have been made holy. So live a holy life. Walk on. Walk have the consciousness that you are God's special possession. people among the people who live that kind of life. The churches go is to become the beautiful and perfect new society brought into existence by God himself. The last test. Galatians 1.24 Shall we read together? And they praise God because of me. Now, minti was share on Yanko Pong and Yunyam. But let's start from twenty two. Now, so Mommy and Sassy and Fee at Yunumi, you know. 
I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. Now, Judea as a for what Christ to Muno, not when you men him. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. Now look at the contrast. Over to verse 23. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. Verse 24. Now shall we shout at this one? And they praise God because of me, Paul. They praise God. The Apostle Paul's convention, convention was genuine and dramatic. See, he declared a, the reality of the life-changing encounter with the living Christ. And demonstrated that change to the admiration of the community. To the extent that they praised God. They praised God. Because of his changed life. They praised God. Because of his changed life. They praised God. Because of his changed life. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, we all the the gospel demands of us repentance. And we need to repent. Now IJ Parker defines repentance as this. IJ Parker say Many times I come back to this IJ Parker's definition because I want us to grasp it. Changing one's mind so that one's views, values, goals, and ways are changed. And one's whole life is lived differently. The change is radical. I mean, it is thorough. It affects every aspect of his life. So he said, both inwardly and outward. Mind and judgment. Sometimes you find some Christians say, that those days when we used to drink, you have not changed. <laughs> Those days when we used to you still cherish those days. When you when you what's that cry? You've not repented. The change affects your affections. Behavior and lifestyle. Now motives and purpose are all involved in the change. See, the new community must be good to look upon. For me, living a genuine repent, living in genuine repentance is like living out the prayer of King David. Now, let's take it from the King James. Psalm 19, verse 14. Psalm 19, verse 14, the King James Version. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So when we are talking about living out genuine repentance, we are talking about even the meditation of your heart. Says, let it be acceptable in your sight. Not when the presiding elder is around. Because he says that you are my strength and my redeemer. If you want to please anyone, please the one who is your strength and the one who can redeem you. So when we are talking about team 2025, we are saying that living a life worthy of your calling demands that the world know that you have known Christ. That you have known Christ. Living a life worthy of your calling implies you take your everyday life and live it generously. Let's look at Live it radically. Expansively. Like creatively. Now live it courageously and gloriously. Said that God will be praised because of you. Said that God will be praised because of you. There are some six topics that we are going to treat in the coming year. This one is supposed to aid the theme 2025 for us to have a better understanding, better graphs, and to be able to be people who live a life worthy of the calling we have received. Number one. Living for eternal rewards. Now, Jesus will come again. We had this old song that we used to sing. Jesus, Obeba. Jesus, Obeba. Jesus, Obeba. Obeba, Ampa. Jesus, Obeba. Jesus Obeba Jesus Obeba Obeba Jesus will come back Yes Obese ya ba biwo So let's live a life with eternity in mind Ti mumu ye mo bra ya dwini si so say da chi e wo Number 2 Ye to so mienu living your faith in the public sphere. Now that we have been unleashed into the world, we want you to live your faith in the public sphere. Number three, serving God with our possession. This is not just talking about money, but possessions. Including talent, your time, your giftings, your graces, all that you have. You serve God sacrificially. Number four. Unleash to save the never dying soul. Now, and they are the unleashing agenda is to bring many into the kingdom. We want you to know that the soul of a man never dies. We are it's so precious. It doesn't matter the body that the soul is, is in. That soul is so precious to God. And we want to have that understanding 
so we can go after souls. But I say, I die every day. When I'm here, so no, I go a kwaji a kra. We would da. I pass out here. I say, I say, I'm going to go. So we go here, here. And I can. But I say, I go a kwa koye. We do man. The faith man is the practice of waiting upon God through prayer and fasting. The tosunum. I say, I say, I jibre a chain. I ready any na way. I say, kwanchi any pipe. Now today I met this woman, and she's 85 years. The other one was, uh, is 87. And then I was asked, I was telling them how God has sustained their bodies. And this woman who is 85 said, it's all because of the fasting. The Church of Pentecost have come that far because of our prayer life. We want to revitalize that one. We want all of us to develop the closets, cultivate it, have time with God, fast and pray. Don't wait for the church to declare fast. No, let us cultivate that attitude of prayer. In fact, in the coming year, from January 6th to January 19th, these two weeks, the Church of Pentecost Global, we are going to fast and pray. Can you imagine what will happen? God is millions of us two weeks fasting and praying and crying unto God. Something good is about to happen. I'm sure it's a great idea. But that two weeks, every morning, I'll be going for visitation. <laughs> I'll go to Mr. Eunice's house. <laughs> when I see that you are eating, I'll just take your food there. And bring you to the headquarters. Now, the, the last one is revitalizing worship and fellowship in the local church. Now, we want the local church to be strong. So, we are designing next year's calendar to lift and quicken officers so they will be strong to bring fire to the local church. And we are doing well. But let's challenge ourselves to do better. I pray that God will help us. So when you find that your presiding elder is not preaching any of these topics, just tell your pastor. When you find out that your pastor is also not treated, there are certain people, when you bring new team, they don't talk about it. All they know is breakthrough, breakthrough. Jesus has broken through for us. All we need to know is to, that's what the Bible says, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That righteousness means the principles of the kingdom. You see, the tree says, the principles and the values in the kingdom, then all these things will be added. Let us seek by teaching these topics. When you find out that, you say, your area head or your national head is not treating these topics. You pray about it. And see what you, you can do. You just pray. As the Lord leads you, just follow. 
the leading of the Lord. But I trust that all of us are going to jump on it. And we are going to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. May God anoint this team. May God breathe upon this Team. and breathe upon our efforts and help us to achieve the desired goal for which he has granted us this team in Jesus name may we display Christ and make Jesus famous again in the nations. May the Lord bless the church of Pentecost. And may the Lord bless every one of you. Now I can't stop this broadcast without giving you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. I want you to give your life to Jesus. If you do not know him, please Pray this prayer after me if you want to accept him as your Lord. Your life will never be the same again. Say, dear Lord, today I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Amen. Amen.